Hey, Lars, what's up? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Hey, thanks for watching. We're talking boats today, and we've got an Alpha 1 Gen 1 Mercruiser Outdrive. We're going to show you how to properly and safely install the gimbal bearing. We have transitioned to the new sealed gimbal bearing design. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers at the Crescent Workstation, and again, we're going to show you how to install your gimbal bearing. And right down there is the tool and the adapter that goes on that long rod. And from here, let's take a closer look. And driver rod. Same rod that you use to align your engine. I'm going to apply just a little bit of high performance extreme grease, which I'll have a link down below in the comment section as well as description section on where to purchase this. All right, DIYers at the garage where the boat is. And again, we are going to install a brand new sealed gimbal bearing. Let's head to the back of the boat and get started. Now to a closer look. Taking a step back, the next thing we will install and hammer in that housing is the gimbal bearing. Right now it's in the freezer, which helps it shrink just ever so slightly in diameter. However, what I'll do first is apply some Quicksilver High Performance Extreme Grease on that rubber seal to kind of lubricate it just a little bit. Because again, your U-joint shaft goes through here and spins at an incredibly high speed. So I want the back side and front side of this rubber seal lubricated. But again, it's not going to have that large amount or buildup of grease that it previously had. And I feel pretty comfortable with that. Again, the back side, front side, and inner portion that the yoke shaft slides into and rotates in. In addition, some people do this, some people don't. I'm grabbing just a tiny bit of grease and I'm going to grease the inner housing that the new gimbal bearing will go into. Again, this is going to help it shift inside this cavity or housing just a bit easier. Do not overdo this because again, your new gimbal bearing does not require grease. Brand new lubricated and sealed gimbal bearing in hand, very cold, basically frozen. It was in the freezer for several hours. And again, two extremely important items to take into consideration before positioning this in the housing. Number one, the yellow dot has to be at the 10 o'clock position and number two, the opening or gap on the rotational inner race must be aligned with your grease hole per the service bulletin and manual. So again, be ever so careful as you install this. 9 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock here, 11 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. Do your best to get it in as straight as possible. From here, I will grab the adapter specifically machine cut and designed for your gimbal bearing and slide that in place. Now to the driver rod. as shown here. And I'll shift the camera just a bit and I will begin hammering this in with my two pound Tekton hammer. Making huge progress and I'm very happy that that went well. That gimbal bearing is properly seated in the housing and you will notice with the driver rod, I never cut a hole in the rod itself or alignment tool. And the purpose of that again is to get the proper alignment for your gimbal bearing and then drill the hole for your adapter. However, for some odd reason, my driver tool portion right here was too big to fit through the gimbal bearing and tool itself, which I found that odd because it's supposed to. However, again, I did not need to drill. And in addition, the last couple hits, I ensured that this adapter tool or driver tool was properly positioned on the gimbal bearing and I used a small block of two by four to hammer it in. You do not want to hammer that gimbal bearing in by use of just the two x four because you could damage the inner carrier here and you definitely do not want that. And again, since I've got everything apart right now, I didn't have to do all those measurements that require a hole to be cut in this large heavy rod. However, since I'm doing it this way, you must ensure that again, 10 o'clock for the yellow dot and the opening in the rotational inner race is lined up with the grease hole. And when the bearing is properly seated against the back stopping point, there must be one eighth inch of that inner bore accessible. And as you hammer this in, just like the grease seal, the hammer makes a unique sound when the bearing is not flush with the back stopping point. Once it gets flush with that back stopping point, the sound that the hammer makes on the driver rod and tool changes. You will know when this is flush with the back stopping point. Now to a close up of the inner housing and bearing. As you can see, it's a little sweaty because it was frozen. And this portion right here, this inner bore, must be 1 8 inch available or showing after you install this gimbal bearing flush with the back stopping point in there. Not this housing, not the next step up, but the third step up where I've got those grooves that the previous gimbal bearing made as it came out. 
So again, one eighth inch must be accessible. So if you do not have one eighth inch accessible, you are not flush with the back stopping point and your gimbal bearing must continue to be driven in until it meets that back stopping point. Taking a step back, now we will transition to the starboard side. We are going to remove that grease fitting and install the brand new set screw. From here, I've got the camera repositioned on starboard side. Again, here is the grease port fitting and you've got a plastic cap. Just carefully pull that off and it exposes your grease port. And just carefully pull this off as you see here. Set that aside. And in our case, a 5 16 socket fits perfectly on that grease fitting. And it's not that tight, which is nice. And there is the grease fitting right there. Grab a paper towel, clean up that little insert slightly. Not too dirty. Now to the brand new set screw. Again, here's the part number and we will remove it from the packaging. New set screw is out of the packaging. This is a security set screw and I'll show you what I mean by that. If you grab your normal T20, you can see that there is no hole. It's a solid piece or bit and the T20 security has a hole in it as you see there because again this is a security set screw and it has an internal pin check that out and in order to screw this in you have to have the t20 security bit with that hole in it and they add this security screw to alleviate mechanics down the road from just assuming that you have a grease fitting and attempting to add grease to the system next the service bulletin and manual state that you need to apply perfect seal or gasket sealing in our case we're using this right here which believe it or not is the exact same product that we applied to the drive shaft oil seals during the outdrive upper unit rebuild and i applied just a little bit in the thread and again that is going to help create an amazing watertight seal to not allow any of the grease to come out into the water as well as not allow any water to get inside the passageway and make its way into the gimbal bearing housing that would cause havoc and just ensure that you are not cross threading the set screw into the transom and you want it snug but do not over tighten it and this gasket sealant again will create an incredible watertight seal now to a close-up view of the new set screw. Again, it is a security screw and you must have the proper security bit to screw that in. If you try to screw it in with something else, you're gonna damage it and that's not good. And coming back, here is the bit set that I have and down below in the comment section as well as description section will be a link on where to purchase this. As you can see, in our case, it was the T20 security bit. So definitely a good set of bits to have on hand. Taking a step back at DIYers, we hope you're still with us and we hope these videos are helpful. Scrolling above right now is a link we will pick up right where we left off. We hope to see you there. We still have a lot to do, including replacing the trim sender and limit switches and wiring, as well as the bellows, water tube, install the bell housing, and more. We hope this helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.